Hello, in the following video, we are going to see how to debug and test Shopify functions. For this video, you should already be familiar with what a Shopify function is and how to create one. In case you aren't, I'll be linking the Shopify functions playlist in the video description so you can check that out first. The function we'll be using throughout this video is the one we saw in the order discount function video, which in short is adding a 5% discount to every unique product in the cart up to a maximum of 20%. And for the discount to appear, the customer must have at least two unique products in their cart. If you want to see how I build this, check out the video where I go step by step. I'll be linking that in the middle description as well. With that mentioned, let's start with debugging. Shopify functions don't currently have a debugger per se, but due to their nature, they are usually not that complex to begin with. So we can get a decent picture of what's going on by relying on console.log and the information we are shown in the partner's dashboard. So now let's go to the Partners Dashboard and check what we can see there. Okay, so now I'm in the Shopify Partners Dashboard and here I'm going to click on the Apps. Then here I'll select the app that has my function, which is this one. Now from here I'll click on Extensions. Then here I'll select my function. And here we can see the different times or function was executed in the last 24 hours, although this period can be changed over here to any of this. If I click on any of these items, I get over here the input the function received and the output the function had. So let's trigger an effort to see how this will look like. So for example, here what I can do is if input not card, but lines, not line, is equal to three. Let's draw an error, view error. This is a test error. Now we're going to run this function. I don't need to be open that. And now I'm going to press P to preview this function. I'm not going to install the function by using the GraphQL query, as I did that already for this exact store in the video I created this function. But if you haven't done that step, you'll need to do that before the function is executing in the store's front end. But now let's add three products to the card. So this one, let's add this one, and let's add this one. And if I go to the execution somewhere here, we are going to see that in this one, we have a runtime error. And here we see the log for this app. And if we go back to the stores front end over here, we're going to see that even though I have three different items in my cart, I don't have the 15% discount this function should give me for this setup. And the reason for this is because when there is an error, the function execution is interrupted. So if you see your function behaving inconsistently, check the partner's dashboard as there might be a runtime. We can also add console.log statements over here to help us debugging. So for example, let's do over here, card lines. And here, let's paste the amount of items in the card. So if I go back to the store and over here, add one item, to force the function to refresh the run again. I can go to the partner's dashboard and refresh this. And over here, this last execution, we can see card lines and three because I have three items in my card. The, the cost of the lock statement is printed in the same lock space where the errors are printed. Now that we've seen how to debug from the partner's dashboard, let's see how we can do something similar locally, because as you saw, there is a lot of back and forth between the store's front end, the partner's dashboard, and the code editor. And if your function setup is longer, like for example, a card transformer function that's bundling several items together, then it can be time consuming to find what's causing the problem in your function if you have to do the setup time after time. So for this, we are going to use the Shopify functions runner which is accessible by using the run command from Shopify. It's important we run it this way because even though you might think Shopify is executing your function in a node environment in their server, that's not the case. As you can see in this article by Shopify, when they introduced JavaScript for Shopify functions, 
Shopify functions are actually compiled to WebAssembly and executed in the infrastructure that way. And when executed in their environment, functions have a set of constraints they must adhere to, such as the ones listed over here, and a couple others like limited network access. Using the run command replicates that environment and makes sure dollar does if our code is doing something beyond its constraints. So now let's copy this command over here. And in this console, I'm in the root directory for this project. I'm going to cd into extensions, order discount. So I'm changing directory to be over here inside this under discount folder. And now I'm going to paste the command up here. If I, pay, if I run this, I get this error. The reason for this is because the command I just copied needed to also have npm run before the Shopify word over here. If I wrote this now, my function will be running in the Shopify runner and I get here the output and I get here the logs. I don't have any logs in this case. You can see over here that this is a WASM file. WASM is the extension for WebAssembly. We can see here some the stats for the memory that was used and the instructions that this function was compiled to. And now let's see how we can do something more advanced with this. So this didn't do much, but the output is accurate. You can see here that the input we are passing to the function is card and then the line, the lines property set to an empty array, meaning that the card has zero items. And for those instances, we don't want to apply any discounts. So the output has an empty array for the discount supplied. And of course this worked because this input that I copied from the documentation falls in line with what I have here in Routed GraphQL. So we have card, lines, and then lines will be an array, which in this case is an empty array, but if it was an array with items, those items should have these properties over here. So now from the partners dashboard, I'm going to copy this input over here, the instant value input. I'm going to paste this over here. And now let's go back to the documentation and copy this command once again. Let's paste it here and let's remove this part of the command and let's paste here the input we got from the partner stash with it. Now I'm going to add npm run here and I'm going to paste this in the terminal. And if I run this, I should get a very similar output to the one that I have here in my partner's dashboard. So over here, I see card lines three. This is this console to block. And then this is a test error. And my test error over here, when I get this locally. And I can then start debugging this. So let's say that I remove this item. And once again, try to run in this comment. If I place this here now, I'm going to see that I don't get the errors. But I have an invalid JSON here, it looks like. Let's say from that to close this array. So let's try it one more time. And here we have it. Here we have this output. We have the message 10% off from buying two unique products. And I have this constant log of card lines too. We can also pass a JSON flag to this command like this to get the output in a JSON. This will be useful if you are connecting this to some CI CD or automated test suite because a JSON is much easier to parse. Over here, you can see the name of the function, the size, and memory usage, instructions, logs, and the output of the function itself. We can also accomplish the same thing by using a JSON. So here I'm going to create a folder, input, and then here I'm going to add input to JSON, and I'm going to paste my input here. Then in the documents, in the documentation, I'm going to copy this command over here, and I'm going to paste it here. Now let's add here npm round, and here Let's complete the path to me. Input, input JSON. And if I run this, my function will be run using the input that I have in this file. And if I wanted to change this, as for example, add 
a third and a fourth item. Let's update this ID to be true form, so they are unique. And if I run this, you're going to see that the output got updated based on what I have here. Now I have a 30% up because I have four unique products in my cart. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that by using the Shopify run command to run the function, we are running it in a similar environment to the one Shopify uses when the function is deployed. Let's confirm this by doing here fetch of Shopify.com and then response the dialog comes to the dialog the response if this was running in a regular node environment this will work just fine but if i run this using the shopify one command you are going to see that i get an error and over here we see that fetch is not defined because effectively fetch is not defined in shopify functions we cannot make network requests at the moment so this is why Using the Shopify front is important, so you can get these limitations right away. And of course, you will also see this in the partner's dashboard, so just use the one that suits your needs when debugging. Now, let's see how to run actual tests. For this, we have run.test.ts, which is a file that is created whenever you create a Shopify function. And over here, we are calling the run function. If we go to the function, it is the Shopify function itself. We can remove this fetch line, thus we don't need this anymore. And here we are passing this input, this object as, in, as the input, which is based on what is in this front of the GraphQL file. So let's update this to match the typings we have. So this is what here, a card, and then lines. Let's pass here an empty array. And now let's run this test here, the PM run test. If we go to package.json, it is running P test over here. If I run this, we see that the only test we have here is passing. The reason, of course, is because the output of the function matches this expected object over here. We will just need to update this to say if we don't know this counts, both the card is empty. And you can see that this refresh automatically and run the test again as I save this file. And as the configuration for this function, Using this constant over here, we can export this. You see that the function compiled is fine. And we can then import this over here in the test file. Let's, for example, get mean unique products and let's create a test to check that no discount is applied if the card has less than mean unique product items. So, return no discounts with the card has less than mean unique products items and here we need to pass a card a valid card that does this so we could just create one manually here but I'm just going to copy the one that I have in input the JSON which I got from the partners dashboard and I'm just going to delete let's see let delete these three items so we just get one item and with one item we should not get any discounts which is effectively the case so both tests pass but if i return this to full items then i get an error because i'm expecting here no discounts but i got a discount because i have four unique items in my cart and if you were getting the functions configuration in a more dynamic way like from an app meta field then the configuration would also need to be part of the input object you pass to the function in the test file. And that does it for this video. If you found it useful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content, and I'll see you all in the next video.